All right. Hey guys, welcome back. All right. So this is going to be a today's topic reading. It is for the 26th of December. As always, you guys can enter to win free read with me by writing compassion in the comment section. Um, just FYI, this will actually come out at midnight um, on the 25th. And so I just want to make the announcement during the day on the 25th, I'll be going live. Um, and doing some free reads for subscribers and such. And so on weeks where I do that, um, I usually will kind of delay picking a winner just because it, I have to actually kind of save my breath a little bit. So I haven't chosen uh, a, anybody just yet to get a free reading from me because I'll be doing a whole bunch of them on Christmas Day, but you can still enter to win. And somewhere after Christmas Day, I'll be choosing a winner. Okay. So just FYI, tomorrow I'll be doing probably like a whole hour's worth of free reads. So that's why I'm not choosing anybody right now because I already know <laughs> I gotta, gotta save up my energy for tomorrow. All right. So here we go. We just got radical honesty and sharing. So radical and blah, radical honesty says to believe in the facade is to suffocate in the armor of alienation, self-defeat and self-denial. Sharing says there is giving in receiving and receiving in giving. So, 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 so have you been in a situation where you've been a wonderful, generous person? And it's been um, one of those things where you keep giving and expecting at some point somebody's going to give in return only to continuously set yourself up maybe for feeling sad or even feeling bad because it's like, why does this person not give back to me? Um, there is an element here where changing, who do we give to? Where do we give? We give where someone knows how to reciprocate. Uh, now, this can also be, it's time for you to learn how to reciprocate. Uh, this could be, it's time for you to be able to accept oh, five of swords in the reverse. Don't block off gifts that somebody wants to give to you. Don't feel, and you know what, with this five of swords, this could be somebody that you'd had conflict this could be, um, and both people have been wounded and bandaged, but in their minds, they still are uneasy with each other. This is like, no, I'm not going to, if I, if I hold back instead of maybe somebody wants to come towards you and make nice with you, this is like, if you truly would like, would like someone to reach out to you, then don't block them when they reach out. If this is, you know, be radically honest. If I really wanted to talk to somebody why don't I go ahead and talk to them? Even if in the past they couldn't give, but now they're in a place where they can, why don't I at least hear them out? Why don't I at least see? Maybe, maybe it'll be, you'll be able to understand much more about why they couldn't in the past. You know, there are times change, things change, circumstances change, people change. This is beautiful because this is all about laying down the burdens and just seeing what, what, what is somebody bringing to the table this time around? Eight of wands, big old conversation. And this is where, this is such a cool card because um, you notice how we've got, you know, like the old saying, can't see the forest for the trees, right? But in this case, the, the forest and the trees themselves hold pieces of this rider and the horse on them. So we've actually got, what I would look at is, there have been gaps of communication. There has been confusion where you didn't understand everything that was going on with somebody's life. Somebody might be wanting to explain themselves now, even if it was somebody who previously made you feel like I gave and gave to this and somebody didn't give back to me. I am definitely going to put up a new boundary around me where I make sure that I give more wisely to people who can reciprocate. I want to be surrounded by people that I love them and I know that they love me. I mean, I think that's an awesome, you know, like I want to make healthy choices. I want to be investing in situations and people who invest in me as well. But with this, whoever this is, and, and there does look like there was evidence of hurt, all those bandages and all of that still um, like sparring of the mind. This is like, I don't want to spar anymore. I don't want any 
any kind of conflict. I don't want any of those things anymore. So now, now we can have a conversation. And in this conversation, we discover, well, there was a lot that I didn't know about your life, about you, about what was going on. There were all these gaps. I could see, I could see the trees, but I didn't know what else was going on. Maybe I was too narrowly focused. Maybe they were too narrowly focused. Maybe they only showed you the pieces that they wanted to because they had things in their life they weren't proud of. This whole thing takes place on a painter's um, palette. If you look closely, this is a hand holding all of this. Like, like we've painted this landscape. Somebody is trying to explain that they were trying to co-create, but they maybe didn't do a very good job of it. Maybe they didn't know how to give to a situation because there were so many blank spots. Maybe they were, they'd pop in your life and then disappear, pop in your life and then disappear. Maybe there were reasons for that. Maybe this person had, um, maybe they ran out of resources. Like, because we're talking about a painter, if you run out of paint, it's really hard to continue painting. I mean, I've done that before, been half done with something. And then all of a sudden it's like, uh oh, no more yellow. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> you know, so I just I feel like this person might have a lot to explain. Ten of Pentacles. A lot to explain about where they've been. Where they've been has not been easy. Look at this card. Okay, this guy is floating around in a flying urinal. So definitely their life might have been in the toilet for a while. They're wearing a chess game on their head. Like everything about their life has been all about like mental strategy on how to get through this, how to get through that. All of the color tones here are so dark, dank. Yet the Ten of Pentacles is supposed to be a card about fulfillment and accomplishment. This person has accomplished a very difficult phase of their life. Maybe this is representing overcoming depression, a really hard phase for them to just work through. Um, this is something where whoever this is, it's interesting because we start out with radical honesty with ourselves about a situation about, you know, hey, if I, if I choose to give to people who can give to me in return, I won't have such disappointment. Okay. Maybe now I realize that giving to someone who didn't give back to me really hurt me and made me isolate myself, made me alienate myself. I'm going to not do that anymore. And as you shift that energy, all of a sudden, the, the barriers come down and now we have dialogue. This could also be a presentation of, um, if it's not the person who was that you were in conflict with in the past, who's coming back in, this could simply represent that you you know, the, the painter's easel is, or um, palette is painting a new landscape and maybe you haven't filled in all the gaps. We also just have a solo writer here. So this could also just represent you rebuilding your life, acknowledging how difficult it has been, but also recognizing, wow, in all this time I've been getting past my sorrow or maybe in the time that I have maybe felt pretty isolated and pretty wounded as I've been coming to terms with everything. I've also accomplished a lot. Maybe I've done it, kind of um, done some shadow work. That could also represent shadow work. Maybe I felt pretty crappy. I mean, we're in a urinal. Um, but I've been working through problems. So I could see this from two sides. This storyline, I feel like this storyline has like so many like great points in it because it's all about like, <sighs> it starts with radical honesty with ourselves, which is, wonderful to do that self-check and really boil it down to, okay, what can I do? What should I do? How did I contribute to my emotional state? If I've been isolated, am I, you know, I can't blame somebody else when I chose to isolate myself. I can say I was wounded and therefore I pulled back, but ultimately I chose to pull back. Why did I do that? What did I learn about that? What's the lesson in all this? Oh, the lesson was maybe somebody couldn't give to me that hurt that hurt but them not giving to me isn't isn't because I wasn't worthy of giving to 10 of wands this is laying down those obstacles this is everything here in this whole reading is about revival everything here is about from that state of radical honesty we we are choosing better for ourselves we're choosing where we can actually give our time and attention who to give our time and attention to why why did things not work out in the past? 
how to not be bitter about it, how to acknowledge how far we've come, see our own shadow work that we've done, possibly somebody else as well. And all that is already over. It's already in the past. This is like this wonderful, I feel like this entire reading is the rear view mirror. This is like, oh, wow. Wait, I, I went through all that. I already did all that. This is maybe a wonderful moment of self-reflection. Thinking about this already all happened to me. And look at, look at how far I've come. Look at that I'm over it. I'm okay. I'm not harboring woundedness. I'm not in a bad place. I learned a lot. Six of Swords in the reverse. I learned a lot about what does it mean to be stuck? What does it mean to wind up running my ship into a dry desert? Well, there's no water for me to sail in. So the only thing I have to do is get back to the water. But in this case, these like divine little feathers are floating this, this ship up in the sky. It's um you've been somehow still protected even in difficult moments. But this is like, um, I, I want to say that this reading is all about either, let me just rephrase this and say someone, because I don't know which character it is, or if it's both characters to a certain extent, someone has realized I was, I put myself in a desert. I could I had every capability of being out at sea, but I put myself in a desert, which is exactly what we see with the first card when it says um, to suffocate the armor of alienation. This is um, self-defeat and self-denial. This is how we get rid of that, the alienation, the self-defeat and the self-denial. It's to just be radically honest and know, wait a minute, I have every power at my disposal to not wind up in this dry desert where there's no one around me, no friends, no love, none of that. That's a mindset. And maybe I put myself there because I was hurting, but I don't stay there. I don't, and I don't have to go back there either because I now see the, the steps that brought me to that. And, and I mean, obviously everybody gets hurt and everybody has to have time to heal. You know, this is, this reading is like super supportive, but this is like super heroic reading too. This is where it's like, oh, I'm coming out of this. This doesn't hurt anymore. Uh, what's weird is that I feel like regardless of whoever that, whatever character this is referring to, oh, we're going into 10 of cups. Okay. That is amazing. 10 of cups <laughs> along with the devil along with the two of wands in the reverse and the two of pentacles upright. So somebody's got their mojo back. Somebody's real excited. Somebody is having the time of their life. Um, somebody's getting very passionate, um, very certain about what direction they're going. And this two of pentacles is very much about harmony. This is like two people in this very sci-fi style gondola floating along a canal. We've got a complete turn of fortune in this card. Why? Because we got really honest with ourselves about why have I been alone? What happened? Oh, I have the power to change that. Not change what happened to me because all that happened. The hurt was real, but I've already come through the hurt. I feel better. And you know what? Come on, we got three tens in this reading. This is so much about completing cycles. This whole story is about completing cycles. We've got that 10 and really good to see all three of these tens in the upright. We have finished our shadow work and we have abundance. We have finished the fear, guilt, shame, remorse, and we're done with that, that self-recrimination or that loneliness. And now here we are entering into a world of tremendous happiness and possibly meeting lots of different people or realizing something unique about the collective, about the world that we live in, that almost everyone has good traits and almost everyone has some shabby traits. And so it could also be that this great happiness comes from this profound awareness that things are never just black or white. Um, someone hurts us, but then we also play a role in sometimes putting ourselves in this little isolation chamber while we deal with that hurt. And at some point we, we do have to change that because that can become like overwhelming, but 
you know, this isn't really much of a devil at all because those horns aren't even like attached. They're floating around like a Macy Day parade balloon. This is this devil card and the devil doesn't always have to be negative, right? It can just be Capricorn. And that's certainly not <laughs> like Capricorns are not devils. Um, this is about when our thoughts, because we all have positive thoughts, we all have less than divine thoughts. We also have passionate thoughts. We we can use our passion to create things, to use it as motivation, to change things, change things in our life. The devil, I don't always look at the devil as a bad card. It really depends on what card it is. But in this case, we do see this buzzard skull. There is a blend. And I really say that this is, especially when we couple it next to this, where we see all these different heads with Every single one of these has another littler head coming out of it and another and another. It's like um, the uh, Russian nesting dolls. It's really talking about the fact that we're all a blend of our own. We undermine ourselves sometimes and we're also capable of amazing things. We can have great happiness with someone and we can also, with that same someone, have great sorrows and great difficulties. Does it mean that somebody is like a horrible person? Well, I mean, some people, I, I don't read stories because this is only entertainment. And I don't think that there's anything entertaining about abusive people or, you know, clinically ill people that do horrible things. Okay. So you'll never hear those, those scenarios in my story. So if any of that happened to you or you dealt with somebody like that, number one, I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. That is not any of my stories though. So please just, um, you know, click off if you went through that, because I don't want to ever minimize or have you imagine that I'm minimizing something you went through. Cause I'm not reading about you. This is only a story about characters, not about your life, but I just want to be really plain because I'm saying this is an awareness that, Hey, we all have our light and our dark sides inside of us. And we are capable of changing. That's why we have a little person coming out of this head with another little person coming out of this head with another. It's because we, maybe we play out echoes of past lives, or maybe we change over time and we, you know, certain characteristics and traits of us in the wrong circumstances, we can become very shallow or in the right circumstances, we can become very heroic, but we all have the capacity to be many different areas of our character and some we like and some we don't. The, to me, this is almost like the light and the dark side of us and recognizing we have it and so does somebody else. But again, that is, if we talk about abusive people, that's a whole different situation. And this is not what I'm refer referencing. I'm referencing the average everyday person who is not clinically ill, who is not abusive, who does not have those illnesses. Okay. So, and then we go into this I just feel like this huge sense of peace and harmony and maybe because we are no longer confused and because we are in a place of balance and harmony, this could be either that we are now bringing in the right quality of a relationship or we are putting a relationship into a new perspective. If we had been feeling very hurt, like someone doesn't give to me, blah, blah, blah we might now realize, wait a minute, why am I overgiving and then feeling bad? Why don't I meet them where they are? Why don't we try to be equal together right now? Why don't I not repeat how much I overgave in the past, particularly if we're building something with a new person? Why don't I not hold on to the idea that every time I meet somebody, I know what's going to happen. I'm going to give and they're not, and I'm going to get shafted. This is where we've done our shadow work and we've let go of that wrong belief that it's destined to always wind up us getting hurt. We're letting go of that in this reading. And we're now acknowledging the light and dark sides of us and others. We're acknowledging everything is about balance. This gondola only works because these two, in this case, it's like a, a weight thing, um, but they are, there's a balance here. That two of pentacles is not about juggling. It's about harmony and balance, giving and receiving, knowing that we have to be good at receiving just as much as we are able to give, but also not isolating ourselves or setting ourselves up for the belief that I'm always going to be the one 
who gives so much and gets depleted. This, this reading is about breaking that mantra. I'm the giver and I never get anything back. This is where it's like, that may have been true in the past, but this doesn't have to be our reality anymore. Now, moving forward, it's not like that. Now, moving forward, we, we can see it more clearly and we are in charge of how much we give and we have um, our boundaries in place. And now it's a delight to interact with others because we know we're not going to get taken for a ride because we're not going to overgive or give to someone who's not ready to give back to us. We're going to recognize it and we're not going to be hurt or think that this is not right, you know, that they can't give to me. Why am I not worth it? Oh, it's never been about that. It's you're always worth it, but someone may not be in a place where they can give. By the end of this reading, with that two of pentacles, you meet that person who you can give equally with. I feel like this could be with someone you've already been with where things got rocky. And now it's like, oh, wait a second. We're getting back in harmony because it's all about the equal give and take. This is beautiful. Okay, I'm going to leave this one here. Take care, everyone. Bye.